Hey guys, we are going to finish Isaiah today. So we're going to read chapters 51 through 66, and that's the end of Isaiah. Okay, chapter 51, Everlasting Salvation for Zion. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. The law will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like fire flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have my law in your hearts, do not fear the reproach of men or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generations. Awake, awake, clothe yourself with strength. O arm of the Lord, awake as in the as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced the, that monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea so that the redeemed might cross over? The ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who, conf who comforts you. Who are you that you fear mortal men, the sons of men who are but grass, that you forget the Lord your maker who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor who is bent on destruction. For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God who churns up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. The cup of the Lord's wrath. Awake, awake. Rise up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath, you who have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes men stagger. All Of all the sons she bore, there was none to guide her. Of all the sons she reared, there was none to take her by the hand. These double calamities have come upon you. Who can comfort you? Ruin and destruction, famine and sword, who can console you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street like antelope caught in a net. They are filled with the wrath of the Lord and the rebuke of your God. Therefore, hear this, you afflicted one, made drunk, but not with wine. This is why your sovereign Lord, this is what your sovereign Lord says, your God who defends his people. See, I have taken out of your hand the cup that made you stagger. From that cup, the goblet of my wrath, you will never drink again. I will put it into the hands of your tormentors who said to you, Fail, prost fall prostrate that we may walk over you. And you made your back like the ground, like a street to be walked over. Chapter 52. Awake, awake, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up, sir, sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. At my first at first, my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately, Assyria has oppressed them. And now, what do I have here, declares the Lord? For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock, uh, declares the Lord. And all day long, my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. 
How beautiful in the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure. You who carry the vessels of the Lord. But you will not leave in haste or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. The suffering and glory of the servant. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted, just as there were many who were appalled at him. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man and his form marred beyond human likeness. So will he sprinkle many nations and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. Chapter 53. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities, infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are like sheep have we like sheep have we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep, and as a sheep before. Her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By pressing and judgment, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. All right. Devotion time. Uh, Isaiah 54 verse two author is Joni Erickson Tata passage is Isaiah 54, a kick in the pants. The old Testament kingdom of Judah needed a kick in the pants, a shot in the arm, a knock on the head. They had rebelled against God for which God plainly and directly judged them through the prophet Isaiah and through foreign nations. They deserved to be scolded or punished, but God was as wise then as he is now. He simply opened their eyes. Your vision is too small because of your pain, he said. You focused on your lack, lack of a nation, lack of power, lack of unity, lack of an army. Pain it all. Expand your tent pegs out a few notches and live as if you have it all. Because you do. You have my prophecy of a mighty nation. You have my undying love, my forgiveness, my power. You have me. The, there are days when I need such a vision. I tire easily at times. And when I tire, I want to go into my tents of pity and frustration and anger. My small tents are comfortable. Though they are dark and cramped, I feel a sense of comfort, but not for long. God tells me in Isaiah 54 verse 5 that my maker is my husband and he desires my company under a larger tent that I might expand his kingdom with him. And as I do so, I find the, a fresh breeze, the fresh breeze, of new strength to deal with my pity, frustration, and anger. I am renewed. Chapter 54, the future glory of Zion. 
Sing, O barren women, you who never bore a child. Burst into song, shout for joy, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her then of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose, dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid, you will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband, the Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit, a wife who married young, only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. To me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. For my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted city, lashed by storms, and not comforted. I will build you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be your children's peace. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will, not, will be far removed. It will not come near you. If anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to work havoc. No weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Chapter 55, Invitation to the Thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is... While... Call on him... Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. I, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush... Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign, which will not be destroyed. Another devotion. Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 2. Author, Carol Mayhall. Um, passage is Isaiah 55. Sip and savor. This scripture exhorts the thirsty to do three things. Come, buy, and eat. We don't need any money to buy, so all we do... So all we have to do is come and ask for the two things mentioned here, wine and milk. But why specifically wine and milk? A glimmer began to grow into the light of understanding. Milk represents what we need for health, for life, for sustenance, the needs in life. 
On the other hand, wine is used in scripture for celebrations, feasts, joy, and so it seems to me not for what we need to have, but what we want to have, the extra desires in life. As a mother, I was obligated to meet my daughter's needs, but what a joy it was when I could delight her heart by giving her some of the fun stuff too, surprises, a few things I knew she wanted, extras, just for pure pleasure. Our father's giving is like that, only much, much more. He is the perfect parent, and in this passage, he declares that he wants to supply both our needs and wants, what we need for health and what is for pure joy. God does indeed delight to delight each of us. Oh, he isn't going to give us what he knows will harm us, even if we ask for it. He won't give us what would spoil us or indulge our flesh, but as the God who knows all things, who does all things well, who is all an all-loving father, he longs for us to ask to ask him for everything, for daily bread, Matthew 6, verse 11. Certainly, and whatever will make our needs, but he also asks that we ask for the extra serendipities that he takes great pleasure in giving us as well. Now I get excited about that. Chapter 56, salvation for others. This is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let not a eunuch, any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. The, their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. God's accusation against the wicked. Come all you beasts of the fields, come and devour all you beasts of the forest. Israel's watchmen are blind, they all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark, they lie around and dream, they love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites, they never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding, they all turn to their own way. Each seeks his own gain. Come, each one cries, let me get wine. Let us drink our fill of beer, and tomorrow will be like today, or even far better. Chapter 57. The righteous perish, and no one ponders it in his heart. Devout men are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. But you come here, you sons of sorcerer of a sorceress, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom are you mocking? At whom do you sneer? And stick out your tongue. Are you not a brood of rebels, the offspring of liars? You burn with lust among the oaks and under every spreading tree. You sacrifice your children in the ravines and under the overhanging crags. The idols who among the smooth stones of the ravines are your portion. They, they are your lot. Yes, to them you have poured out drink offerings and offered grain offerings. In the light of these things, should I relent? You have made your bed on a high and lofty hill. There you went up to offer your sacrifices behind your doors and your doorposts. You have put your pagan symbols forsaking me. You uncovered your bed. You climbed into it and opened it wide. You made a pact with those whose bed you love, beds you love, and you looked on their nakedness. You went to Molet, Molech with olive oil and increased your perfumes. You sent your ambassadors far away. You descended to the grave itself. You were wearied by all your ways, but you would not say it is hopeless. You found renewal of your strength, and so did, and so you did not faint. Whom have you so dreaded and feared that you have been false to me? 
and have neither remembered me nor pondered this in your hearts. Is it not because I have long been silent that you do not fear me? I will expose your righteousness and your works, and they will not benefit you. When you cry out for help, let your collection of idols save you. The wind will carry all of them off. A mere breath will blow them away. But the man who makes me his refuge will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. Comfort for the contrite. And it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly <clears throat> and to revive the heart of the contrite. I will not accuse forever, nor will I always be angry. For then the spirit of man would grow faint before me, the breath of man that I have created. I was enraged by his sinful greed. I punished him and hid my face in anger. Yet he kept on in his willful ways. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him and restore comfort to him, creating praise on the lips of the mourners in Israel. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mirror and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Chapter 58, true fasting. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and, for, and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions, and seem eager for God to come near them. We have we have fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your work. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. If Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not a sh to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe him, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of, of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age old foundations. You will be called a repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not doing your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joys in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Chapter 59, Sin, Confession, and Redemption. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the egg of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. 
Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their past. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our, off, our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, for, fomenting, fomenting oppression and revolt, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and re retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due, from the west, men will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from the this time on and forever, says the Lord. Chapter 60, the glory of Zion. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To the rich, to you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come. Bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Keter's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me, and the, in the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing you sons from afar with their silver and gold, to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Foreigners will, re will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you, in favor I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night. So that men may bring you the wealth of the nations, their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine, the fir, and the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary. And I will glorify the place of my feet. The sons of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and in silver, and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will be no more in your 
no more your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be glory, be your glory. Your sun will never set again and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will end. Then will all of your people, all your people be righteous and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest and mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. I will do this swiftly. Chapter 61. The year of the Lord's favor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for, for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work for your work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are people of the Lord. The Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. For my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Chapter 62, Zion's new name. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings with your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will be will be stow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah in your land Belua. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. <coughs> you who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem. It makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. Never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord. And those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made a proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your Savior comes. See his reward is with him and he his recompense. His recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after the city no longer deserted. Okay, devotion. Isaiah 63, verse 9. Author is Hannah Hernard. Uh, passage is Isaiah 63, 7 to 9. Dare to begin. On the last day, the shepherd did a very wonderful thing. He took much afraid apart by herself and carried her right up to a high peak, dazzling white, uplifted like a great throne with numberless other peaks grouped round about. 
up there on the mountaintop, he was transfigured before her, and she knew him then to be what she had dimly sensed all along, the keen of love himself, keen of the whole realm of love. He was clothed in a white garment, glistening in its purity, but over it he wore a robe of purple and blue and scarlet, studded with gold and precious gems. On his head he wore the crown royal, but as much afraid bowed herself and knelt at his feet to worship, the face that looked down upon her was that of the shepherd whom she had loved and followed from the very low places up to the heights. His eyes were so full of gentleness and tenderness, but also of strength and power and authority. It was then that much afraid took courage to ask him something which she had never dared ask before. With her hand held in his, she said, my Lord, may I ask one thing? Is the time at last soon coming when you will fulfill the promise that you gave me? He said very gently, yet with great joy. Yes, the time is not long now. Dare to begin to be happy. If you will go forward in the way before you, you will soon receive the promise and I will give your you your heart's desire. Okay. God's Day of Vengeance, Chapter 63. Who is this coming from Edom, from Bozrah, from, with his garments stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I, speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the white winepress? I've trodden the winepress alone. From the nations, no one was with me. I trampled them in anger, in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood spattered my garments, and I, and I stained all my clothing." For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and the year of my redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm worked salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger, and my wrath I made them drunk, and poured their blood on the ground. Praise and prayer. I will tell the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised. According to all the Lord has done for us, yes, the many good, thing, good things he has done for the house of Israel. According to his compassion and many kindnesses, he said, surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. In their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people, where he was, where he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who set his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown? Who led them through the depths like a horse in open country? They did not stumble like cattle that go down to the plain. They were given rest by the spirit of the Lord. This is how your guide, you guided your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your lofty throne, holy and glorious. Where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are a father through, Ab though Abraham does not know us. Or Israel, acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your inheritance. For a little while, your people possessed with holy place, with your holy place, possessed your holy place. But now our enemies have trampled down your sanctuary. We are yours from of old. But you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. Chapter 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard. No ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts 
are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O oh Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us as we pray. Uh, for we are your people. Your sacred cities have become a desert. Even Zion is a desert. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and glorious temper temple where our fathers praised you has been burned with fire and all that we treasured lies in ruins after all this O oh lord will you hold yourself back will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure okay another devotion uh, isaiah 64 verse 6 authors gg graham check the Dijian. passage is isaiah 64 adorned it was Easter, my favorite time of year. I was visiting my grandmother and grandfather Graham in Charlotte, North Carolina, and woke up on Easter Sunday to the horrible realization that my mother had forgotten to pack me a Sunday dress, much less a special one. I did the best I could. I wore an aqua skirt and a navy blue sweater that didn't match. When we arrived at church, there I was, the ugly duckling in the midst of all those beautiful southern ladies and their daughters, dressed in their finest. I will never forget the terrible feeling of being so unsuitably dressed for that special occasion. When the Lord returns, will we be awkwardly attired in our good works, which are like filthy rags in his eyes? See Isaiah 64, verse 6. Will we be wearing the old hand-me-downs of our parents and grandparents or the latest religion, um, religious fashion? Or will he find us appropriately clothed in his righteousness alone? I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels Isaiah 61 verse 10 okay chapter 65 judgment and salvation I reveled revealed myself to those who did not ask for me I was found by those who did not seek me to a nation that did not call on my name I said here am I here am I all day long, I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations, a people who continually provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of unclean meat, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your fathers, says the Lord, because you they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me in the hills. I will measure into their laps and full payment for their former, de former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is still found in the cluster of grapes and men say, don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it. So will I do in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks in the valley of Achor, a resting place for herds, for my people who seek me. But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table of fortune for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and you all and you will all bend down for the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will put, be put to shame. My servants will sing out of joy, out of the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name to my chosen ones as a curse. The sovereign Lord will put you to death. But to his servants, he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. For the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. New heavens and a new earth. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. 
The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune fortune for they will be a people blessed by the lord they and their descendants with them before they call i will answer while they are still speaking i will hear the wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion will eat straw like the ox but dust will be the serpent's food they will neither harm nor destroy on all holy mountain says the lord judgment and hope chapter 66 this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they come into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills the man. And whoever offers the lamb, like one who breaks the dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood. And whoever burns Memorial incense, like one who worships an idol. They have chosen their own ways and their souls delight in their abominations. So I also will choose harsh treatment for them and will bring up upon them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. You, brother, your brothers who hate you and exclude you because of my name have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. Yet they will be put to shame. Hear the uproar from the city. Hear the noise from the temple. It is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemies all they deserve. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has ever seen such things? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery, says, the God, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All you who mourn with over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flood stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. See, the Lord is coming with fire and his chariots are like whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment upon all men and many will be those slain by the Lord. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens following the one in the midst of of those who eat the flesh of pigs and rats and other abominable things, they will meet their end together, declares the Lord. And I, because of their actions and their imaginations, am about to come and gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal in Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame, or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your brothers from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels, and I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the new earth that I will make that I will make that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord. So will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord, and they will go out and look upon the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. Their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all mankind. That's it for Isaiah, guys. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye.